Let's take a look at how to interpret phase diagrams. A phase diagram shows the state or the phase of a substance at different pressures and temperatures. So you'll notice pressure is on my y-axis and temperature is on my x-axis. And I have different phases separated here. Sometimes the phases might not be labeled, but you have this little diagram where it looks almost like a little fork in a road. And you can kind of always figure out the phases by going to a point where if you were to go across, you would meet every single phase. So if I go here, because if I go down, there's just two phases, solid and gas. So we'll go across, um, we'll go horizontally across a point where I hit all three, right? So notice temperature is very low, right? At low temperatures, what phase would I expect? I'd expect a solid, and that's why solid's here. And if I cross this line, now I go into the next phase. What phase would that be? That would be liquid, and that's what's shown here. Okay, it would be free, uh, melting into a liquid. And if I were to keep increasing the temperature at the same pressure, then it would cross this next line into the next phase, and that would be gas. So if these phases were never labeled, again, I would go to a point where you have all three present, and that kind of makes sense that at the same pressure, as you increase the temperature, it should go from solid to liquid to gas. Notice, again, as you cross these lines, you're doing different phase changes. Here, going from solid directly into gas is sublimation. Going from gas directly into solid is deposition, and so on and so forth. If I had any pressure and temperatures, I told you, hey, the temperature is such and such and the pressure is such and such, I can find the point and figure out what phase I am given that pressure and temperature. Okay, so here I have liquid on one side, gas on the other, so this line here represents all the boiling points. So given any pressure, I could go across, drop down, and figure out what the boiling point would be for that substance at that temperature. It starts at this point, which is called the triple point, where all three phases are present in equilibrium, solid, liquid, and gas, and that's why it's called the triple point. It ends at this point, which is called the critical point, and the critical point is the temperature above which a vapor can no longer be liquefied, or no matter how much pressure is applied. So I can't really go directly between gas and liquid above that point. Okay, if this line here is between solid and liquid, so this line would represent all the melting points for that substance at different pressures. So again, if I have the pressure, go to this line and drop down, I could find the melting point. I could do that with any pressure for this substance. Down here, this is going between solid and gas, so I can go and find what's called the sublimation point, at which point this would happen for any pressure here. Go across, drop down, so on and so forth. Okay, and we'll really look at this with some examples to see how you could be asked. Um, here's a phase diagram from water. Again, you can determine the phase at any given temperature or pressure. So let's say, I, here's the phase diagram. Again, here's pressure on the y-axis, temperature on the x, and I ask, what phase is water at 200 atmospheres? ATM is an abbreviation for atmospheres, which is a unit of pressure, and 100 degrees Celsius. So I would just go, okay, 200 ATM, I don't know, is about here. 100 degrees Celsius is about here. Where do I land? I land in the liquid phase. Okay, I could do that with any pressure or temperature data. You find your point and you see what phase you're in. Okay, you can also find the effect of a temperature or pressure change. So for instance, I might ask, what happens as water at 0 0.005 atm and 100 degrees Celsius is lower to negative 50 degrees Celsius? Notice the pressure staying the same and I'm just changing the temperature. So essentially, I have two points to find. So let's find the first point. 0 0.005 atm, I don't know, maybe somewhere around here, and 100 degrees Celsius, where am I? Here I am in water vapor. Okay, so I'm gas. And I'm telling you the temperature is lowered to negative 50 degrees. So I start here, and I lower it, I don't know, maybe to here. So what phase change is happening? I'm going from gas into solid. That's deposition. So you can figure out the phase that you're in, and if you have a change in phase, you can figure out the name of that phase change. Okay, let's try this one. Here's a phase diagram for carbon dioxide. Okay, again, if I go, if I find at any point horizontally where I see all three phases would be there, first I'd hit solid, then liquid, then gas, but they're labeled for me, which is nice. What happens is CO2 at 6 atm and negative 70 degrees is lowered to 0.25 atm. The temperature is staying constant, the pressure is changing. So let's find our two points. 6 atm, I don't know, maybe around here. Negative 70, maybe around here. Okay, here I am in the solid phase. 
and the pressure is lowered all the way down to 0.25 atm, maybe down here. So I'm going from solid to gas. Hey, that's sublimation. Make sure you still know the names of those phase changes. Okay. If you ever see the term normal, it's asked for the normal melting or normal boiling point or normal sublimation point. This is the temperature that corresponds to a pressure of 1 ATM or 760 millimeters of mercury. These are the same pressure, just different units. So 1 ATM or 760 millimeters of mercury. So here's the phase diagram for water. What's the normal melting point of water? Okay, so I'd go, normal means I'd go to the pressure of 1 ATM, since this is ATMs. If this were millimeters of mercury, mmHg, then I would find 760, but this is 1 ATM. So I'm going to go across to the melting point line, which would be, be between solid and liquid. This whole line here is where my melting points would be. So if I go to the line between solid and liquid, and I drop down, I would see it's 0 degrees. The normal boiling point, normal means 1 atm, so I'd go across to the line between liquid and gas. These would be where all my boiling points are. And at normal uh, pressure, if I drop down, it would be 100 degrees Celsius. Take a moment. Here's a do now example. There's uh, the phase diagram on one slide, and on the next slide you have questions. Give them a try and check your work. So the first one says label the phases. Notice that the phases are not labeled. So if I go down here, I only have two phases that you would transition from and to. Go to a point where horizontally, if you go across, you would hit every single phase, every one, two, three phases. So I'm going to start, um, let's just go across where one is, okay? So over here, this would be a solid. At low temperatures, it hit a solid first. Then as I raise the temperature, it would change into a liquid. It would melt, and this whole line here would represent the melting points. And then, as I, after liquid, as I raise the temperature, it would change into a gas. This whole line here would represent the boiling points, where I'd have both liquid and gas present, or liquid changing into gas, or gas changing to liquid. And again, this whole thing would be the sol solid changing to liquid, liquid changing to solid. And this would be my sublimation points between solid and gas. So all this section here is gas, all this section here is liquid. Okay, what is the boiling point at one bar? So boiling point, I want to go to the line between liquid and gas, and it asks me for one bar. So if I go across here and I drop down, I don't know, I'd estimate that to be maybe 360 Kelvin, 360 K. What is the sublimation point at 0 0.001 bar? So 0 0.001, the sublimation point would be between solid and gas. Drop down, and I'd say, I don't know, maybe 230 Kelvin. And you might have estimated slightly differently, but as long as you get answers around this. What's the phase at 400 K and 100, and 100 bar? 400 K and 100 bar. Here I am. I'm in the liquid zone. So that's why I say it's important to make sure you label this first if it's not labeled. That should always be your first step. What's the phase at 10 bar and 600 K? 600 K, 10 bar, I'm in the gas phase. What phase change occurs when the substance at 10 bar and 200 K is changed to 400 K? So 10 bar is staying the same, but it's changing from 200 to 400. So I am going from a solid to a liquid. So I would say melting or fusion. Make sure you still know the names of those phase changes. What phase change occurs when the substance at 10 bar and 400 K is changed to 0.01 bar? So the temperature is staying at 400, but I'm changing from 10 to 0.01. So I'm staying at 400, but I'm going from 10 to 0.01. I'm crossing from liquid into a gas, and that is called vaporization. Okay, at the melting point, an increase in pressure favors the more dense phase. So what I mean by that is um, if you go to your graph, okay, and you just go anywhere on the solid liquid interface line, anywhere on this melting point line, okay, and increase the pressure. So increase pressure here is on my y-axis. If I were to increase the pressure, meaning I'd go up, what phase do I turn into? Here I would turn into a solid. If I increase the pressure, I turn into a solid. So that must mean that um, the solid the solid is more dense than the liquid. An increase in pressure favors the more dense phase. So what you're going to notice is any time you have this solid liquid line bending to the right, the solid phase is more dense. 
And you could just memorize that, or you can do this thing where I said, hey, pick a point on the line, increase the pressure, and see what happens. Whatever phase you turn into is the denser phase. Notice here, if this line leans to the left, okay, um, if I pick a point on it, if I were to increase the pressure, I would turn into liquid. That must mean the liquid's the more dense phase. And that's always going to be the case if this line shifts um, its bent to the left. Take a moment and try this next example. The curve is on one line, uh, the phase diagram is on one page, the questions are on the next. Label your phases because you need to do that first before you can really answer the other questions. Label the phases. Okay, so go to a point where I would turn into all three. So C must be a solid, B must be a liquid, and A must be a gas. What's the boiling point at 30 atm? At 30 atm, here would be the melting point between liquid and solid. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for the boiling point. That's between liquid and gas. So if I drop down, I don't know, I'd say about 50 degrees. At what pressure does the substance melt at zero degrees? Okay, so at zero degrees, I want to know when it melts. That would be the solid liquid line. And I go across, oh, that would be 30 atm. What's the phase at 60 degrees and 6 atm? 60 degrees are out here, and 6 atm, I would be a gas. What's the phase at 100 degrees and 300 atm? 100 degrees would be about here, okay, and... I already forgot 100 degrees and 300 atm going up here. Okay, I'd be a liquid. What's the phase change that would occur when I'm at 10 atm and negative 75 degrees Celsius, but I'm changed to 1 atm, so the temperature's staying constant at negative 75 degrees, but I am changing, so maybe right here, but I'm changing from 10 down to 1, so I'm going from a solid into a gas, that's sublimation. What phase change occurs when the substance at 30 atm and 200 degrees Celsius is lowered to 20? So 30 atm is staying constant, but I'm going from 200 to 20. Okay, so I'm going here, but I'm going from, so 30 atm is constant, but I'm going down from 200 down to about 20 degrees. I'd say gas into a liquid, so that's condensation. And now I can answer the question, which is more dense? solid or liquid phase. So let's look at how this line is leaning. This line is leaning to the right. So you can actually, you can memorize what that means or you can just pick a point on the line and we said increase the pressure, go up and see what phase you turn into. I turn into solid, so that must mean solid is more dense. We said whenever that line leans to the right, the solid's going to be more dense. 